حياكم الله في الشارده just arrived to Sharjah and this is going to be a bit of a whirlwind trip. I've actually got no idea what to expect. It's a state in the UAE but more than that I don't know what to do here. I've been told there is a lights festival which is going to be interesting but we're, we're, we're going to see. I'm about to head out right now in one of these cars and start exploring Sharjah. It's the first morning and we have four days to see everything in Sharjah. This is my first trip here. I've only ever been to the UAE on a, uh, UAE <laughs> on a quick stopover for 12 hours. So actually this is really exciting to get to see a bit of the Emirates properly. We're starting off this morning at the Chedi Al Bait Hotel and then just having a quick look around, see some of the architecture here before we head out and explore some more of the area. So now we're getting to try some of the Emirati food. And for me, Middle Eastern food is the best cuisine in the world. I love it. But there's a lot of stuff here that apparently I've never tried. So yeah, this is exciting. Thank, Thank you very you much. How is Harris. It's uh, meat with meat. And this is ghee on top there. Ooh. It's vermicelli noodles, which is sweet, served with eggs. So you have a taste of both salt and sweet. Salona. Salona, yes. Salona. So it's all been really good, but there's a couple things here that I've never tried before. The first one is the haris, which kind of looks at the first glance like a baba ganoush or hummus, but it's actually a lot thicker and it has a bit of meat in it. Really, really good. And then also I have salona, which looks a bit like a birani, but very similar to it, but now I'm going to tuck in and let you know what I think of them. A little bit? Yeah, I don't think it's yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh. Right. Arabian Tea House. If you ever make it here, then go and check it out because absolutely brilliant food that I've never tried before. I've had a lot of Arabic food, but never the Emirati food that we just had today. Finishing with a traditional dessert, some really good lamb, and then rose water on your hands to make you smell nice. But yeah, that's even worth coming to Sharjah in itself. But now, after being very stuffed, it's time to head on to the next thing. We always like have the date before the Arabic coffee because we will get the magnesium and like all the vitamins in it. Uh, and it's like the natural sugar. Feel free to take it out. Uh, one time I forgot to mention about the seed. Oh, uh, guess the what happened? Uh, I served the coffee. You, no, no, no. No, that is the story. <laughs> We are now in the heart of Sharjah, the cultural center of Sharjah, and interestingly, the first place that people ever stayed and lived here. This has now been converted into the site of the Chedi Al Bait, one of the best hotels here, and also these old buildings and courtyard. We're being shown around now by a lovely and hilarious woman who's introducing us to Arabic coffee, dates, and the traditions behind it. If you want any angle, let me know. <laughs> this is what I mentioned when I told you this is a boomerang, right? <laughs> so the smell will go also under my abaya. <laughs> Grinding uh, the coffee. So when we grind our coffee, there is something unique. I will show it to you. Do you have an idea why we have to have that sign or so like a sound? So people know that it is time for coffee? Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Free coffee for you! Thank you! <laughs> that 
is the reason. Imagine you are like lost your way in the middle of the desert mm. and you will hear this sound. You will recognize that like someone here I want to ask where to go. Mm -hmm. And at the same time if you are thirsty or like you like to have some coffee or water, by this sound you will come. Mm. And if you want to practice, the, the floor is yours. And <laughs> So it's very interesting that a lot of the traditions in old parts of the world, like UAE, is come from a rich story and the rich background story. And even with the Arabic coffee that we've been having, there's a story behind how you serve it and then how you let someone know that you've had enough. If you want to keep drinking coffee and you'll keep getting served until you say no, you just hold it out and then the server will re refill your cup. <coughs> But if you're finished, you would shake the cup and then that lets everyone know that you're finished and you've had enough. And the reason is that coffee drinking used to be a very intimate way of sharing stories and sharing secrets. So often the servers would be deaf or have limited hearing so they couldn't overhear people's secrets. So that was a way of letting the deaf server know that you're finished. And it's like little things like that that we're getting told that you might not know if you just came here without being told by a guide, but there's actually some really interesting stories from the past of Sharjah and the Arabic world in general. Molasses uh, date syrup. Yeah. How in the past they are preparing the date syrup using this room. This is an archaeological site. What is the process for making the date syrup? They bring the date, they dry them for two to three days. After that, they select the best pieces, put them in a bag made from a palm tree leaves, like called the rub in Arabic. And they put one bag over the other in this room, and by the room temperature and by the uh, pressure, uh, the molasses, the syrup, will uh, move in those alleys going to earthware jars. Okay. Bon appetit, enjoy your uh, molasses. <laughs> Thank you. This is very interesting. We're in the House of Wisdom right now, which already has 85,000 books. But if there's a book here that you want that you don't happen to have, then you can get it printed out using this machine within about five minutes. They have a library of over six million books that you can print directly from this and create a book just like this one. It'll just pop out the machine. You could also use it to self-publish in about five minutes. And I don't have one yet, but yeah, so that's very cool. So Sharjah is a place that I think a lot of people might not have heard of when compared to Dubai or Abu Dhabi, which are the other more popular places and states in UAE, United Arab Emirates. But it is the third most popular city here, and it is also a place that's getting more popular with tourism. There's no alcohol allowed here and it's more, it has a Muslim majority in this state so therefore it's getting more popular with Islamic tourism which has been a focus of these last couple of days. We went to the Islamic Museum this morning and then tomorrow later in this video you'll probably see we're going to go to the Quran Academy and you'll get to see some of that. But I think there is, oh wait I need to go, there's people uh, we're going through. But you can see there's a lot to do here over the next few days. Somewhere that I never knew about, but that I'm falling increasingly in like with. Okay, and now we are crossing the bridge onto Al Noor Island. First up, this is the Butterfly House, which is the main attraction on Al Noor Island. And as you can imagine, it's a house full of butterflies. Ah, escape. <laughs> right, as I was just coming in, a butterfly just made a mad dash for it. <laughs> so we do import them as pupa every 10 days from Costa Rica and Philippines. Every 10 and, days? Yeah, every 10 days we import 600 pupa. Mm. And then we have a chamber over there where we keep them to hatch. When they hatch, they can fly within this area. You 
got in? Hi. Made a friend. Made a friend. Hi, it's cool. Pretty chill. <laughs> Now from the Butterfly House, we're going on a walk around the island. There's a bit of a nature walk here with some art installations, but the real highlight of today, which is one of the reasons I came, is what you're gonna see directly after this. So yeah, I won't spoil the surprise. Just wait. just leaving the island now but listen to that this is like a nature kind of reserve in the middle of Sharjah it's uh, it was a natural park and then it's been turned into this actual walkable area in the last few years and then all these birds have settled here <laughs> that is so loud All right, so this is the main thing, the thing I was talking about earlier, the Sharjah Light Festival. And this only happens once a year. I'm not exactly sure what to expect, obviously, other than it being a lot of lights. Let's go and check it out. Wow, what do we have? Local cuisines. Ooh! Yes, Australia? freshly made. Huh? Australia? London. In England. And I've been to Sarat London, Uberi, so far and set. Is it okay that we. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you dive in. Chips. 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 Thank you. Okay, so this, this is for everyone, right? I think so. Oh. It's like a labna and it's local bread. It looks like sort of a labna and what is this? I'm gonna, I'm gonna have some of this one. <laughs> so this is called chebab. Chebab. Yes. So this is chebab. There's um, it's a sort of local bread with date sauce and a little bit of cheese. Hmm. Yeah, it's like a datey cheesy pancake. Oh, good, different. Yes, please. More coffee. Thank you. actually insane. I did not expect it to be that good but they had the light show and then the fireworks coming over the top and I was genuinely very very impressed that was cool but that's not even the main part of this because for the light show the whole city is lit up which I'm gonna show you right now. So all over Sharjah buildings have been lit up like this. This is the Sharjah Mosque and it's part of the Sharjah Lights Festival and look at that, that is actually pretty stunning. It's changing constantly with all these patterns behind me. There's loads of other buildings like it around the city and we're seeing all of them tonight. With that, I think it's time to finish the video here. It's been an action-packed few days. We've done 
everything in Sharjah, <laughs> at least we've tried to. And yeah, I've actually, it's a place I didn't really know about before. Actually, even when I heard of Sharjah, I was thinking Egypt. Maybe I got it confused with Sharm el Sheikh, but I didn't realize that this was a place in UAE. And I don't know, maybe it's not really on the tourism radar yet, but I think it will be because there's a lot to do here and there's more of the cultural side of the Emirates, the Emirates, there's more of the cultural side of the United Arab Emirates compared to Dubai, which is where obviously most people know about and go to and do it for the luxury and partying. But if you do want to see a real original traditional side of Sharjah, then I think this is worth a trip across to as well. Everyone here has been very welcoming, open, keen to teach us about Islam and their traditions and I think that's true both here and every Arabic country I've ever been to. They want questions about Islam, they want more understanding about their culture and their history and I've been happy to learn a lot of that. And I don't need to mention the food because that's just been incredible and it always is in <laughs> in Arabic countries. It's just, you know the food's gonna be great. A very cool couple days. We're now continuing in Sharjah out of the city into the desert and there's some other really good things that I'm gonna show you there as well. For now, thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Well, it's very early by the way, that's why my voice is going, because I think it's, it's like 6am, we're about to head out of the city. See you in the next video.